Zen, what, what are your takeaways so far from the receivers? Yeah, I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased. I mean, I think we're all, you know, Coach Twenty said we're back in business, you know, and I think, you know, today was tough. We were, we were a little banged up today, but overall we've been really healthy. Um, and the guys were flying around, making plays. I think offensively, you know, with, with some of the new um, concepts that we have, um, I think there's excitement, you know, from the guys. They're having fun. They're excited to get out here and make plays, and, and they're doing that. You know, I think in our last scrimmage we had – um, 11 big plays um, and you know did some good things did some bad things um, but man we're, we're really you know making some some big plays downfield and and um, I'm seeing a lot of improvement a lot of excitement a lot of energy so um, I'm overall really really excited about what we got going on any guys in particular that have stood out so yeah I mean I think with with Joe I just was encouraged with talking to him and you know he's he's hardly missed a rep you know I mean um, he's he's healthy and uh, I think this is the most technically sound and God has been um, which is exciting I'm not having to correct nearly as much um, and so that's that's great for your senior you know your leader your boundary receiver and so he's and he's been consistent he's making plays he's leading this is the best he's led the most verbal he's been um, on the field um, and in the meeting room he's, he's great you know, he's, he's like another coach and he helped me out so he's He's, he's been everything I've, I've hoped for um, up to this point. Um, Bo Collins is a pro. I mean, you hear that all the time. I mean, Bo is, is um, I mean, he's probably the most consistent guy we have overall. And he's probably had, I'd say, probably the most big plays um, up to this point and, and just so consistent. You know, you I don't have to watch him in practice. I can focus on the other guys because I can, I can expect him to know what to do um, and to perform at a high level, you know. And so um, great energy, you know, and so he's, He's a good one. Um, Spectre. I mean, how about him coming back after everything? And so Brandon's done a great job of, of playing that slot. With EJ being out, I was going to have EJ playing the slot a little bit and also some two. Okay, but Spec, man, that's a, a great position for him. And so he's getting a ton of reps. You know, he was going to be kind of rolling in, having to kind of slowly transition in the spring. All of a sudden, EJ is out. And Hey, all right, Spec, let's go. You know, and I don't, I don't think we really ex expected, you know, him to be able to, to push through and get the amount of reps he's gotten. Um, and so I think we're thrilled to see him with the speed, with the quickness, the short area burst. You know, is 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 what he does. Um, solid pass catcher, very natural pass catcher. Um, and so those guys, you know, kind of ro rolling out there first have, have done a really good job. Adam Randall, I mean, everyone's you know raving about him, and, and for good reason because. He's just, he doesn't look like a freshman. You know, physically, you can see that. But, but out there on the field, he, he's a quick learner. Comes from a great program at Myrtle Beach High School and um, very similar concepts to what we run. And so um, all it is for him is really new terminology. You know, I mean, he's done these concepts before. And so he's, he's making plays, he knows where to be. And um, I think for him, you just see a, you know, a big physically imposing guy that uses his, his frame using God's gift to his to his ability, you know, and um, and he's a, he's a great pass catcher, very natural pass catcher, and and so um, that's been great. Dakari is is doing good things, and I think with him challenging him because of a couple guys, you know, dropping with Troy being out a little bit, you know, with with EJ being out, um, he's had to play nine and two, so he's playing the boundary, he's playing the field, and so he's having to learn a lot, and that can be a little bit, you know, he's still a young guy learning. Um, but he's, he's done really well. I think the last four practices have been probably his best. Didn't have the greatest start. Um, but, man, Dakari has done really well and, and bounced back um, from a little bit of a rocky start. And um, Troy getting back out there, he's doing some good things. I can go through the whole group. I mean, I'm seeing some really good things in development from all these guys. Um, and, and I think that, again, like I said before, there's excitement. Um, there's competition. I mean, it, you know, it, it's an honor to play receiver at Clemson and to run out there first. You know, and, and I think this is the most I've challenged the guys and just, hey man, understand like this is the standard. I mean, you've set a standard of Clemson, all right, and, and we're gonna get back to that. All right, it's gonna take work out here in practice uh, before it shows up on Saturday. So um, we're doing some good things. I'm talking about Brandon Spector. I mean, how challenging was it just for him mentally last year? Just he obviously has some things beyond his control and trying to work yeah. him through that. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was challenging um, mentally. Um, but I think if you ask him, it's probably one of the better things that's happened to him overall for his just for his psyche. Um, I think he grew a lot. You know, I, I see a more relaxed, confident spec 
than, I, than what was before the injury. Um, and so I, I feel like he's in a good headspace, and I feel like he's more confident um, and, and having more fun. Um, so you ask him that year away, um, probably has made him a better player. It's made him a better person. He's told me that, you know, um, and so I'm excited for him. It's just perspective, you think? Perspective, yeah, perspective. I think he kind of, you know, grew up a little bit. I mean, I think he, you know, went through some tough challenges and some adversity and kind of found out who he was a little bit more, you know, and I think he grew his faith, you know, as what he shared with me. And so um, that's, a, that's a cool thing. So he's, he's, he's grown in, I think, a lot of areas. What's he look like physically just coming back this spring? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got great speed. You know, people kind of forgot because we went through mat drills before we had spring practice, and everyone was like, man, that's what they were talking about. You know, because before he got hurt, he, he was flying around everywhere. You know, and so he's just a, he's got springs in his legs. He can, he can run, you know, and, and change directions and, and, um, and get open, you know, in those short areas, which is what you want in the slot. And so um, he's, he's picked up the, the playbook well, um, getting open, um, using some good technique, you know, manipulating a DB and um, that kind of stuff you have to, you got to do in the slot. You know, it's 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 man it's man coverage, but a lot of time it's understanding zone and grass and how to get open. And uh, and he he's doing a good job of he knows it, but he's he's learning that more. Is there some Renfro in his game? Yeah, I guess you could. I mean, you know, somewhat. You know, Renfro was I don't know. Renfro didn't even think about it. He just kind of did it. You know, um, so kind of similar um, skill set when it comes to the explosion. You know, the, the short area quickness. Can you elaborate some of the things? He said some new concepts and had guys excited. Can you just elaborate some of that? Yeah, I mean, I think with what we've, I mean, typically kind of heading into spring, you look at what you did in the fall and what you rep most, and you, you say, okay, we, we actually repped this more than another concept. Let's let's install that earlier, maybe. Or um, we, with with Coach Schreeder, you know, taking charge, and Coach Richardson stepping in as the passing coordinator, you know. We had, we had to get to work. We, you know, it wasn't. I mean, we, we had to see. Okay, what do we want? Who do we want to be? And Coach Schreeder, you know, um, having to call the place he believes in. You know, and so um, taking some some concepts last year and tweaking them. All right, and, and feeling really good about that. Um, totally new concepts we've never run before, um, where we are attacking areas of the field that uh, we probably haven't attacked before um, as often. Yeah, I should say, um, and. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's just a ton of excitement from the guys because they see it, right? Um, we installed some stuff, and um, and then they got to do it out here and realize, wow, okay, this is this is new, and we are kind of attacking something we haven't done before. So that's, that's been good. Anything else studied in particular? Offenses or anything you studied to try to? Yeah, we, we, studied, a, we studied a few. We studied a few, I think, with, with Coach Streeter, you know, kind of um, – Having been a coordinator before, you know, taking what he's done in other places and um, and using those, but also kind of merging some concepts. And I mean, it's not difficult. It's, it's football, and everybody's running the same the same stuff for the most part. Um, and so, um, you know, putting wrinkles on on some former stuff and, and uh, dressing it up with motions or, or uh, formations. And um, I think that's and what's crazy is it's probably a little more simple in some ways. Um, where the guys don't have to think as much, um, which is which is really good, you know, because guys, listen, we have the athletes. We're always going to have the athletes. Let's let's go play fast. Let's know what to do and play fast. So um, yeah, it's been good. It seemed like there was a shortage of downfield big plays last year. Yeah, as compared to recent years, mm -hmm. and is there more of a concerted effort to maybe? Catch the field a little bit? Sure. Yeah, there was a shortage in like every area uh, last year, right? Um, so uh, we, we know that. And uh, but man, it's we, we we have the guys, you know, and, and we want the opportunity, and, and we're, we're seeing that out here, you know. We're, we're taking advantage of them and um, making more of those plays, and um, I think they're hungry, you know, to kind of get back to, to doing that, you know, making those down the field plays and those big plays and scoring touchdowns and having fun, I and mean, that's what a receiver loves to do, right? Um, and uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's an, an area of emphasis for sure. How frustrating was it for you last year with all the injuries? It just seemed like every time you guys get a little positive, you take two steps back. Yeah, it was, it was frustrating for my guys. I mean, just having to you know having to move guys around um, and, and maybe play them in some areas that maybe didn't suit them 
in their skill set as well, you know. Um, and, but listen, you have to play your best guys, and, 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 and they understand that, you know. Because um, I want to see them perform well. I want to see them be successful and accomplish their dreams. Um, so that was frustrating for them and for me. And um, you can't help you can't help injuries, you know. Um, I learned a ton uh, from that whole situation. I mean, I learned. I, I failed in, in plenty of areas that um, you know I had to, to swallow that pill, you know. And as a young coach, that's learning, um, you know, the profession every day. Um, you know, man, I, I really <laughs> got a crash course last year, and I, I I'm so eager. And I was so eager, kind of heading into, into you know, uh, mat drills and spring practice to get back out here. Like, I just want to get back on the grass and let's fix some stuff, you know, like, because I've, I've learned a lot, you know, and, and uh, so there's a lot of excitement and I think a, a lot of humility uh, from, from some of that failure. Um, but man, eager and hungry and excited to, to go and, and improve it. Is the recruiting, uh, the uh, recruiting coordinator role, something that you put a bug in Dabble's ear, and he just kind of no. surprised you one day with it? No, or? there's no. I'm kind of just like, here you go. This is this is your new your new job. You know, <laughs> here's your new title, and um, so that wasn't my idea. You know, but but it, I think it fits me well. You know, and um, I enjoy recruiting. I really do. Um, and it's something that even that is. It's, this is my first spring ever to go on the road and recruit. I've never gone on the road and recruited in the spring. You know, because of COVID. Um, and so that'll be new and exciting to meet my area coaches. I mean, I've, I've been on the phone with my area coaches, but I've never met hardly any of them in person. Some of the South Carolina coaches at the Marble Beach Clinic we had, but like, um, I'm just excited to get out there and, and get on the road and develop relationships and, you know, become a Robbie Caldwell, you know, and, um, it's going to take a while, you know, but, uh, that's exciting for me, and, and just in this role, I mean, we have such a great recruiting staff. You know, Jordan Sorrells and Josh Wall and um, Zach Fulmer and the rest, of Ty Clements and the rest of them. We have a, a phenomenal staff, and I'm just there to help them, you know, in any way I can, and they help me a ton, you know. But you know, be a liaison with the high school coaches and uh, you know, give ideas to help us improve in recruiting. Um, be creative and have fun with it. And uh, whenever people come on campus, man, they feel like this is a, a special place. They have been, but continue that. What are maybe some of the angles and ideas that you hope, you hope to incorporate or already have started incorporating is kind of being the overseer of all things you're Yeah, I think, I think, you know, one thing I'll share, I can't give my ideas away, you know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, one thing I think is, is staying, doing a good job of, of you know, and Coach Winnie's big on this, but area, you know, your area guys, like in this day and age, you have a lot of position recruiting. Right, like I'm just gonna focus on receivers. And that's important. But like, man, the high school coaches, you need to have those relationships with your high school coaches where, hey, I have a linebacker, you know, in my area um, that's a top guy we're recruiting. Well, I need to be recruiting him as well, but also talking to my coach and, and, and being another person that's involved in that, right? And that's big, you know, and I think that the high school coaches appreciate that. Um, and then, you know, just having, having a lot of um, organizational skills with staying on top of the recruiting and how you're communicating with your guys and the topics of conversation and and um, that's important you know because the guys get tired of hey how you doing you know they want you need to have you know we have so much ammo to sell let's let's be reminded of that and let's package it well and you know and be and be consistent with messaging you know and man let's sell all, let's sell all that Clemson has um, so that's that's going to be it's going to be big. In this day and age when people are so quick to offer, it seems like they offer earlier and earlier and earlier, mm -hmm. how difficult is it to kind of adapt to the Davos Sweeney, you know, method of patience to where, you know, you've got the Georgias and the Alabamas have 50 and 70 offers out to, you know, sophomores already. Yeah. You guys have one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it can be somewhat challenging, but once the, the, um, once the recruits understand our philosophy and then it's explained to them, they can appreciate it. And again, high school coaches appreciate it, right? Because, you know, Coach Swinney, I'm not going to go through, uh, listen, I, I have a lot of Swinney-isms in my mind of what I could say and why we don't, and I'm not going to repeat them, all right? But I but I agree. I mean, <clears throat> I believe in what he says. And uh, But, man, the guys can appreciate that. And um, and I think, too, it's, man, it's a long time to recruit a guy that young, right? Well, we can, we can talk. We can have a relationship. But, man, whenever we offer at Clemson, we're all in, right? Now, we're going to shoot. Let's go, man. That's everyone. Let's 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 go get this guy. Let's go land them. And they feel that they're not just another dude, right? They're special, okay? It's special to get an offer from Clemson. And so, um, 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it is what it is. And I think that's when he says, hey, listen, blame me. All right? It's, hey, listen, you know, hey, I'd love to offer you. You're an offer guy. All right, but we're, we got to wait. We got to wait a little bit. You know, your time's coming. All right, let's get a fourth semester transcript. Let's make sure you can drive it right. All that stuff. So that's 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 what we do, and uh, and it's and it's been successful for us. I mean, we've gotten the guys. I mean, golly, you look at our roster. I mean, seriously, I mean, it's we, we've gotten the guys that we that we needed um, that fit us. You know, plain and simple. When you when you say you feel like you failed in some certain areas last year, what specifically? What are some of those areas where you feel like? You yeah, I mean, you know, just in, in the way in, in coaching and communicating um, a couple of things, you know, teaching, you know, kind of reevaluating how I taught a, a number of things. Um, and, uh, you know, I think for me is, is learning the balance of, you know, um, challenging your guys, um, you know, and, and, and loving them at the same time, you know, in, in that relationship and, um, you know, some of the glaring things and some of the emphasis we have is like, right, okay, perimeter blocking. Okay, that, that was a, that was an issue at times. And again, I think some of that kind of comes back to personnel and and you know having some guys in some areas that maybe they didn't suit them as well because we had to. But but you know and that's not an excuse. Um, but um, you know for me in that emphasis, well, I've made that more of an emphasis on the field and my individual drill work. Um, I've made that more of an emphasis in my meeting room and spending more time and showing them more looks and and uh, and really making sure we feel good about our perimeter blocking, um, our spot blocking, right? Where you don't have a defender necessarily, you have a spot and knowing coverage and, and who to pick up depending on coverage and who shows up to that spot, right? So those are kind of things that, that I've really worked on um, and, uh, you know, that, that's one of the main things. But, yeah, I mean, I've had to had to reevaluate a number of things and, and then implement them. And so that's why I was so excited to be back out here. Do you expect Antonio to come in and try to compete right away? Oh, yeah. To get oh, yeah. I really do. I mean, he's he's going to have that opportunity. You know, he knew that. That's why he, he committed to us. You know, he wants to play early, and he'll compete for that. Um, and he's he's got the mindset. You know, he's very confident. He's, he's got the skill set. Um, you know, he, he's a guy that, that we knew. I mean, I was on for a while. And... Uh, and stayed in touch for a while, you know, and thinking that, hey, this could happen, and um, and I'm happy it worked out that way. I, mean, I think we got the right guy. I really do. And uh, and so in the return game, he's a natural, you know, as a punt returner especially. Um, so he'll be able to compete for that as well. Um, so, yeah, he's going to have an opportunity. How was the, I guess, the leadership and camaraderie of the room, the want to and, the, I guess, the drive, and maybe that relates to the perimeter blocking some. You mentioned um, maybe some of those guys were in uncomfortable positions, but just curious how much how much of that was uh, stemmed from want to or maybe lack thereof in, in some cases. Yeah, I mean, most you know, blocking isn't that hard. I mean, it's it's technique and understanding, right, of concept, where the ball is being run, you know, outside run, yeah, wide zone or or a, or a bubble, you know, to the fullback. Or a running back, right, and kind of where that ball's, you know, getting wrong. Yeah. Understanding concept is important, but really, it's just it's just being a, you know, a grown man. It's 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 being angry, right? It's it's a violent sport, right? And and so, um, I blocked a lot at Clemson. I, I blocked more than I caught passes. I, you know, I, that's that's what I did, right? And uh, let CJ, Jacoby, and all of them have fun, but. But so like that's a you know that was more babies and so for me it's just that challenge hey man you, you got to be angry to do your job well you have to dominate the man across from you you know and and so yeah I mean that's something that we've talked about a lot you know and uh, and we we have worked good on good with our defense and like half line drills perimeter blocking drills which is it favors the defense because they know it screens and all. I mean they're you got Barrett Carter barreling downhill at you. Right, and you're trying to block the spot, and you can't you can't really attack. You have to kind of position block a little. That's not easy, all right. Um, but man, it's it's you have to have that dog to you, you know. And uh, and that has been created out here. You bet you, you have to have it in practice to, to win the drill, right? And so putting them in that situation, I'll say this: we have put them more than ever before. We have put them in that situation in practice because we know that was a, that was a, a, a weak. Um, part of our of our perimeter game 
is, you know, and, and again, you know, you lose an Amari Rogers, that, that hurts you, right? But, but, you know, but still, you, you have, we have to clean some of that up. So we have done working on good. And then if we're not at the defense that's available and they're working on their own things, we as an offense have done half line drills and screen drills and blocking. And so we, we're, we're really, you know, we have so many images now from practice to coach off of more than ever before. So you're going to see, you're going to see better perimeter blocking. You're going to see more yak. All right. We, we do throw the out screens. Um, so it's, I believe that. I know that um, each staff member has their own positions that they recruit, their own areas they recruit. Mm -hmm. Can you just kind of educate me as what recruiting coordinator, what is kind of your main thing with that title as far as overseeing these guys in their areas? Yeah, I, you know, I think for me it's, it's kind of just, you know, prep as we go out for the spring, making sure that, you know, they're, they're, they're hitting their areas. Like South Carolina, we're going to hit every school, right? We're not going to miss one school in South Carolina. Okay, and so making sure that everybody's hitting South Carolina um, at some point in the spring evaluation period. Um, not only that, but also if it's outside of your area, um, position recruiting, right? You got to get a recruiter position this day and age. So going outside your area to go and, and you know and get your top quarterback or lineman, you know, and and so having a plan and helping them in that. And again, we have a phenomenal staff, but keeping that, keeping that in mind, the forefront of their mind. Um, and uh, and I think again, just like being the liaison with, with high school coaches. So for me, it's emails, it's text messages, it's staying in touch with those guys um, as consistent as I can. Um, and that's that's primarily it for the spring, I would say. Is it more work than you anticipated with all the calls, the constant communication? Um, I mean, no, I, I kind of anticipated what it is because I've seen it done. Um, and so it's nothing that I wasn't expecting. So. And somebody mentioned they thought on your very first trip as recruiting coordinator and wanted to have a speaking engagement or talk to recruit that you're playing crash lane in Georgia. It's being, but that was that before I wasn't, the, I wasn't the coordinator at that time. Okay, okay. No, that was that was, that was was my first ever plane flight recruiting. And I was the only one on board and, and like the system shut down, they flew blind. It was, uh, and there was very little uh, visibility, you know, was the fog and um, they were sweating. I could tell. I could tell the pilots were, were anxious. That's not a good feeling. All right, but we made it. So. Was that in Georgia? Yeah. And was that, that you were just on a recruiting trip, but you were here, but you weren't recruiting coordinator. I was not. I wasn't coordinator at that time. Okay. Yeah, this, it was it was over a year ago. Gotcha. The, the perimeter blocking is that difficult in general, just to get receivers to buy into, just because you they sign, I mean, it, you catch passes. Well, and I mean, you like, look for that in recruiting as well. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I really do, and that's one of the, you know recently had a guy come through and had to ask his coach, hey, like, you know. Is he, a, is he a track guy that plays football or is he a football player that runs track? You know, like, you know, for me, I want, I'm looking for tough guys. Like that's part of, that's one of the main things that I'm looking for is, are you a tough athlete? I mean, you have to be. And so for me, that's, that's something that should be innate. Um, and so it is, but I think too, you know, sometimes that, that, that can be developed a little bit, right? I mean, you don't want to just totally, you know, you watch film and it's a five-star dude that's making great plays and maybe as, isn't as interested in blocking. Well, their high school coach probably isn't making him. Mm -hmm. They are not. They don't make that an emphasis. They let him go and score touchdowns and they say, hey, take a playoff and run game. That, that happens all the time. And so, you know, you have to have that conversation with the receivers coach at that school and say, hey, listen, explain kind of how you coach blocking. You know, and if they're not getting taught, well, then you can't hold that guy accountable as, as much. Uh, but you do in recruiting, you want to know that, you know, they love football, they love the game, and uh, they want to be physical. That's that's mainly what you do in re receiver. You know, you block more than you catch passes. So um, you better you better love it or learn to love it pretty quick. Do you, you use, uh, do you use like, former players' film and say go back and, like, watch T. Higgins and – some of the blocks he did when he was here it still does in the NFL. Do yeah, you use that? yeah, we, we do. I mean, because whenever we have the install, like whenever we're putting in new plays, um, it, it shows up all the time. You know, we still, we'll go back and we'll pull from, from old, old, you know, plays um, from prior years. Um, just watch Hunter Renfro run a great route, you know, and, and that's how you do it, you know. And, and we'll go back and we'll, we'll have the image of this is the way it's done. And so it shows up for, you know, for those guys to see those, you know, former players be physical and, and make those plays or blocks. You said you learned a lot last year. Are there any big takeaways, anything that stands out more than more than others as far as what you kind of want to do differently moving forward? That's a good question. Um, not really. I think I answered that earlier. Um, for me, it's it's uh, yeah. I mean, I think like I said, there's there's a lot of 
of excitement and eagerness to, to get back out there and um, to do my job well and to get the guys ready and to have fun doing it. Was the perimeter blocking um, and I guess the lack of dog last year, was it a surprise to you once the season started or was it something that you're like, yeah, I kind of was worried about this going into We We had some issues in fall camp yeah. a little bit um, that, that showed up. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was it was something that um, became challenging, you know, and, and, and really had to clean up, you know, and, and get right, you know, during the year. And I think if you watch our progression, they got better. They really did, and um, and that was that was exciting. I mean, I, I, I showed them. I mean, and I stayed off social media because nobody, none of the offensive coaches would want to get on social media. It wasn't very helpful. All right, <laughs> um, but I would hear from our players, you know, and they were down because of, of what was said on social media, you know, and I try to tell them, hey, stay off. That's not helping you either, all right? Only read the good stuff if you want, you know, but don't be searching for the bad. That's not helping you. Um, but, uh, but yeah, they, they, you know, we had to challenge them, you know, and and, um, and I, I got challenged, you know, I mean, I, but, and so that was, it was a, a tough pill to swallow, but it, but it had to be done. And, and um, you know, we had to learn from it and, and grow and accept the challenge and not run away from it, you know, and, and they did. They they responded, and uh, we got better. Um, you know, and thank goodness we got some some backs that, that could tote the rock, and, and uh, we helped them. You know, and um, so yeah, we, we improved toward the end of the year. Would Adam Randall in addition to just being physically built, would would it team do it to impress you? What have you seen from him? Yeah, he, he's made some down the full plays. Um, I told him, hey man, it's not going to get easier. You're going against, you know, no disrespect, you're not going against the first team corners because yeah. we have some guys out. I said, let's remember that, that those dudes in green jerseys that aren't practicing right now, they will be back out here. Yeah. All right? So, like, don't don't be too happy. Like, first, I mean, good job. <laughs> That's awesome. You're doing some good things, right? right? But I'm trying to keep them grounded and keep them working. It's not it's not that easy. All right? Let's 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 stay committed, you know, and keep working on our craft because he, he has to get better. I mean, he's, he's got to get a lot better. I mean, he's a, he's a senior in high school. He's a mid-year, right? Yeah. Um, and so don't, don't get me wrong. Everyone's saying some awesome things about him. Um, but some of those big plays have come against walk-ons. So like, that's, that's for me, like, I don't, don't read your press clippings. All right. Um, so let's, let's understand that you're going to have, you know, some dudes, all right, lining up against you because he's going to help us. He's going to play early. All right. So hey, it's not easy in that boundary. There's less grass. All right. You gotta, you gotta play fast and play physical. And I think for him is, is, you know, his conditioning. You know, physical physical con conditioning precedes anything else as a wide out. All right, physical conditioning precedes anything else because if I'm not a physically conditioned receiver, then I'm a weak receiver. All right, if I can't run downfield multiple times in a row and make plays, and finish plays, you can't help us. So you have to be in shape and and it starts in practice. So we, we challenge them a good bit and, and finish them. You know, run after catch and chasing the ball. You know, um, all the time and not blow them. <coughs> That's big because it's going to help you become a better, you know, pass catcher down the field. I mean, you know, having having the lungs to do that consistently. So that's something that's going to be that, that I've challenged him on. He's a big joker. Well, he runs around sometimes like a like a big joker. All right, and he gets tired. All right, and so that's that, he knows that too. Um, again, he's a young guy, and this is a high high pace, high energy. You know, it's new for him. Um, so he, you know, that's an area that he's improving. Um, but man, he he's making down the full plays. <coughs> Um, I think it's, again, it's just it's he's knowledgeable, he's a quick learner, he he's a he's got a, a you know quick trigger in the in the meeting room with his answers. I mean, he's quick to, to respond to questions, <coughs> quiz them all the time in front of all the guys, and he'll answer them most of the time uh, correctly. So, I mean, he's yeah, he's he's a good one. Coach, have you talked about what you want to see from Engada at here a little bit late? Yeah, I was saying that he's been uh, the most consistent he's been um, and uh, technically sound. He, he, I'm not having to correct a whole lot with him, um, and so and he's he's making plays. I mean, he's um, he's staying healthy. He's on the field, like you know, hasn't missed a, hardly a rep, um, and uh, got got banged up early on in spring, and like came right back. I mean, he's you know finished. It was a tough, it was a nasty. I mean, look, calling for a trainer and like missed a couple snaps, and he was back out there and, and pushed through. And that's the thing, like you can't, you know, it's tough when you have these Ferraris at wide out, right? Like, you know. Golly, everything has to be just right sometimes. That's not football. Like you, you have to be able to play well when you're not 100%. And so playing through some pain, 
right? And, and so these guys are pushing, and, uh, and he's he's one that's doing that, and uh, he's healthy and strong, and um, and I think too what's been good is he's probably the most coachable he's been. You know, challenging him on some things. Oh man, he listens. He's like, okay, yep, yeah, I got you. It makes sense. So that's and he knows this is his last shot. I mean, hey, you know, this is your your last go around. Let's make it your best, and he feels that, and uh, he's he's doing well. He has a new perspective now, doesn't he? I would say, so. yeah, definitely. Have you seen enough out of Stellato as far as just being healthy to kind of know what you have? Yeah, I mean, he's probably he's got when you watch him catch a football, um, that ball doesn't move much. I mean, that he's got really strong hands, um, which we knew early on. Um, you know, the problem with Troy is has been he showed up injured, and then he missed a lot of reps. All right, and so as a young young freshman. Especially not as a you know if you're not a mid-year enrollee and you're getting here in the summer and you're, you're missing all those reps, it's hard to play early because mm -hmm. um, you have to know concepts and so you got to be trusted to you know to get out there and uh, you know and so for him um, he knew that this was going to be a big spring for him to get the reps okay and to, to get comfortable with the offense to you know be able to answer questions in the meeting room and um, he's done a, a much better job of that. Um, and then as far as out here on the, on the field, I've talked about his hands, um, very solid <clears throat> um, speed. You know, um, I think for him, he's had some injuries. Like right now he has a little bit of a hamstring and he came back today and he was in green, um, but he'll you know, hopefully be full go on Wednesday, we'll see. Um, but because of that, you, don't, you can't open up as, as well. And for again, a, a Ferrari speed guy, you know, if you don't have those, those hamstrings, right, the horsepower ain't there, you feel it. And so, little, you know, trying to open up his stride link, really, really run, you know, um, to his full potential was hard when you're not 100% healthy. But man, he can, he can run. And um, so, yeah, he's, he's made a, a really good improvement. Hey, one more, if anybody has one. Just going back to Nevada, you know, we talked about the importance of kind of keeping a, a level head or just kind of, you know, staying even killed when he was going through those injuries. What did you see from him and what I guess did he contribute maybe from a leadership perspective when he was out? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, he's he's a guy that's been around, right? So he he kind of knows what we're about, and um, it was hard. It's hard when you're injured or not contributing, uh, when you're in the training room, when you know there's some meetings going on or whatever, because he's trying to get healthy, and so that that was hard for him, and um, you know, but man, he he was able to step in and and, uh, and be there for the guys, and, and you know, be another coach on the sideline, you know, I think is something that I try to encourage um, him to do. Uh, throughout the year, it's like, hey man, we need energy from you. You're not playing, but you're on the sideline with us. Like we need energy from you, and and so he would help. I mean, he would really help with that. And I think that maybe set him up. You know, it just kind of dawned on me, but maybe set him up for for now as a leader, a more vocal leader, because he couldn't play. He had to, you know, just communicate with the guys. I think he's done a better job. I really do um, of 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 communicating and being a vocal leader. And, I told him, I was like, hey, man, when you're tired, you want to be, you're selfish. You're just trying to make it through. I was like, hey, man, speak up, all right? Speak up in that moment. Don't be selfish, all right? And what happens is you hear yourself talk, and that'll get you going too, you know? So trying to keep that in mind for him to, hey, man, we need a spark. You know, you can be that spark for us. You know, White House, man, you can be that spark. You know, we'll make a play, all right? So um, they've been doing that. All right. Thanks, Thank Coach. Thank you very much. Thank you.